Hello everyone, welcome to Photobyte. I'm Ann, and today we'll be taking a look together at the new Leica M11. Okay, so holding a camera this valuable up like this without the strap around my neck is giving me a heart attack, so enough of that. So the M11 is Leica's new flagship rangefinder camera for 2022 and we can trace the M series all the way back to the M3 from 1954. Leica have been making cameras since the mid 20s, though prototypes were developed all the way back to 1913, but the M3 was the first with the eponymous M mount, a bayonet style fitting that is still in use by Leica to this day and coveted for the high optical quality of their lenses. Leica M cameras have been used by hundreds of exemplary photographers and quite a few celebrities though they're most famous for street photography, photojournalism, and portrait shooting. They suit these genres especially well, given they're slim, portable, unobtrusive, and without focusing motors, the lenses are also highly compact for their capabilities. As a portrait shooter, you might find subjects more at ease with a Leica M and a 90mm Summicron lens than something like a 5D and a 70-200 2.8 zoom. Now the specs of this new body are mouth-watering for Leica aficionados, but beyond that, it also represents a real step change for the brand in terms of embracing modernity and bringing it into the 21st century. It uses a new high-resolution backside illuminated 60 megapixel sensor, the most detailed results from a full-frame digital Leica in history, surpassed only slightly in raw resolution by their 64 megapixel medium format camera, the Leica S3. On a side note, though the M11 is a luxury product and a big investment, it's cheap for that resolution compared to the S3 that's over £16,000 just for the body. Now it's also quite a jumping capability from the M10 line that preceded it, with the main M10 models using a 24 megapixel sensor and 2020's high res update, the M10R, utilising a 40 megapixel sensor. The M11 body will run you about £7,500, with the 28mm Sumalux I have got to use with it adding another £5,500 to that price. Now this camera produces beautiful, detailed images, helped in no small part by that drop-dead gorgeous 28mm f1.4 Sumalux lens I got to try out along with the camera. The dynamic range and noise handling is excellent for such high resolution files, easily handling low light situations with a plot. But the results are only half the story when you shoot with a Leica. For those not familiar with the M series, that maybe only know of Leica due to the brand perception of that iconic red dot, or due to the reputation of their stunning lenses, the M series are fully manual rangefinders. There's no autofocus here. The shooting experience is one unlike any I've ever experienced. Now I took it for a day of shooting around Canary Wharf in East London, an area where quite a few of the workers in these high rise banks might actually be in the market for a camera like the Leica M11. Rangefinders like the Leica M cameras are mirrorless, utilising a completely different optical mechanism for focusing compared to the mirror and prism system most people will be familiar with from SLRs. For the shooting experience, it's definitely something that takes quite a bit of getting used to the first time you pick up the camera. So in the viewfinder, you'll see guidelines that will show you the composition of your image, along with a brightly lit square in the centre. Without boring you to tears, the brighter square is how you focus dialing in until the image in the square overlays perfectly with the image in the rest of the viewfinder and then hitting the shutter. Now it's a real skill and as I only used it for a couple of days I'm still a complete novice but the focusing tab on the lens makes things so much easier for a beginner to get a good grip and focus relatively accurately even at shallow depth of field like 1.4. Now of course the other way to focus is using live view on the rear screen. The M11 uses a well-designed clear interface and a very sharp 2.3 million dot panel for navigating menus and composing images. This is more than double the 1.036 million dot panel on the M10. Focus peaking on that rear screen came in handy a few times during my use with the camera, especially when working at low or high angles. 
Now the menus are also wonderfully designed and intuitive to work your way through. In some part, this is due to excellent industrial design and in part it is due to the stripping back of features. There's simply less this camera can do than comparable high-end systems due to a lack of video features and autofocus, which can mean less menu diving and more time shooting. If I could have a hybrid camera with Leica's menus for the photo settings and black magics for video, it'd be the ultimate all-in-one. It is that much of a joy to use. Now, without a doubt, shooting with a Leica is one of the most fun shooting experiences you can have with modern cameras. I know it's a cliche to say it slowed me down and made me take my time, but it, it's, it's true. With more work going into each shot, each shot seemed to matter more. When the time comes to get those images off of the camera, it's another area Leica has made modern conveniences in a huge way. The bottom plate change is undoubtedly controversial for Leica fans. With the addition of a battery door and a USB-C port somewhat contentious with those that praise Leica for holding onto tradition, but it has made the camera instantly so much more user-friendly for a digital native like me. Now, while the screen on the back is great, let's face it, we want to see those images on our laptops, tablets, phones, and in print. And this is the easiest camera I've ever used to offload images from. The first way is simply through the means of the USB-C port. With built-in card readers on our devices becoming a rarity, Leica has taken the brilliant step of building in 64 gigabytes of memory directly into the camera. This means no losing those precious moments or postponing an entire shoot just because you forgot to load a card when you left the house in the morning. The USB-C port also functions as a convenient way to charge the battery, though the separate charger is diminutive and adorable anyway. Now there's another convenient way to offload your images though, and that is the Leica Photos app. It's certified made for iPhone and iPad, but it also works with Android devices. So if you've gone all in and have the Leica Lights phone, you can use it with that as well. Now I've tried apps from Canon, Panasonic, Olympus and Sony. While I have been able to get them all to work across my Fairphone or my iPad at one point or another, nothing was as seamless and hassle-free as Leica's application. Pairing is a simple QR code. And downloading the photos was a breeze, though it did take quite a while to move the almost 200 images I shot across the day to my tablet though I could still browse the images and adjust camera settings while it was downloading, and this made the whole process much more tolerable. And with the advent of iOS and Android apps arriving on Mac and PC, this process might be a great way to enjoy wire-free tethering in a small studio environment on a big, bright monitor. So there we have it. A quick overview of the camera that is blending the old and the new in exciting and interesting ways. It's not for every style of shooting and it is a big investment, but for the right kind of shooter this is a one of a kind experience. I only wish I could keep it for longer. It is a truly remarkable little camera. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.